Hello friends. So today we are going to cover the introduction of composite material. Uh, composite material is quite interesting part as far as that materials are concerned. So nowadays in many more application that uh, we are seeing that the composite is mostly used. The fantasy of the composite material is light in weight. So this is the very much uh, we can be able to say uh, because of this particular nature, the composite materials are widely used in many more applications. So what kind of that? Uh, what is the meaning of composite material? What are the different composite materials? So these kind of that things we are going to cover in this particular lecture. So the contents of today's lecture, that is the definition of composite material, then the classification of composite materials, then what are the natural fibers and synthetic fibers, then the classification of natural fibers, then cellulose fibers, then what is the meaning of synthetic fiber, then materials of the fibers. So we can be able to use the different kind of that materials for the fibers and those materials we are going to see in the detail in this particular content then the continuous and discontinuous fiber so this is actually the nature of the fiber so we are going to cover what kind of that different types of the fiber natures are there then the continuous and discontinuous fiber apart from that what are the composite structures and then the advantages and disadvantages of the composite material so Today's lecture is quite interesting because all the introductory part related to the composite that we are going to cover. So I hope that after this particular content that you can be able to understand what are the what is the meaning of the composite material and what kind of that different kind of that structures of the composites are there and how this particular composite material is having the differentiation from the metals. So in the further lectures also we are just going to cover the basic comparison part related to the metals and composite and this is very much important to understand related to the different types of the materials what are its properties what are its behavior and how this particular composite material is manufactured so all those contents will be there in the further lectures. So first of all, we will just see what is the meaning or what is the definition of the composite material. So there are few examples are also there. So based on that, you can be able to try to understand what is the meaning of the composite material. So what is the meaning of composite material? So basically the material system, which is composed of two or more physical distinct phases. So what is the meaning of this? Try to understand in the metal, only single physical distinct phases phase is there but in the in case of composite we are just combining the two different physical distincts and this particular combination produce the aggregate properties and that are different from those its constituents means whatever may be its properties are there of that particular material means suppose if you are mixing the two materials together the first material is having the different property second material is having the different properties and when we are mixing those two materials together so whatever may be the component we will form or whatever may be the material we are going to form so that will be produced or that will be used the uh, aggregate properties of those means those properties might not be gets enhanced in all manner or those properties will not be gets lower in all manner okay so this is actually the particular definition of the composite material. Now we can be able to see some examples related to this. So this is quite familiar example that we have seen when we are just uh, having some sort of that uh, civil structures. So in that particular civil structures, what exactly we are going to do? So we are just mixing that particular concrete reinforcement along with the steels. So whatever the steel is there, that steel is going to provide some basic properties related to that and those particular concrete will be just bound that particular steel firmly 
and those particular structure of that particular concrete will be gives you a very great kind of that properties or strength we can be able to see now the, when we are mixing the epoxy reinforced with the graphite so the graphite fibers will have some sort of that different kind of that properties and when we are just bounding that particular graphite fibers together so that particular structure will gives a very great kind of that physical as well as that chemical properties okay so these are the quite some examples so in simple manner when we are having the reinforcement along with some matrix so that will be produce a composite so basically whatever way the fibers are there for the matrix so we can be able to use some sort of a different matrix and uh, when we are combining these two together we will get the composite structure so this is in simple manner you can be able to understand what is the meaning of composite now how the composite material is classified so this classification is quite important to understand so the composite basically have the three main domains so in that particle reinforced then fiber reinforced and structural composites so in the particle reinforced so large kind of that particles might be there or dispersion of kind of that particles are there so in the fiber reinforced composites so the continuous or discontinuous so we are going to see what is the meaning of continuous fibers and discontinuous fibers also and in the structural composites so basically the laminates or sandwich panels kind of that structures are there so all these are the main classification of the composites now the next part related to this that first of all you should be able to understand so the difference between the natural and synthetic fiber so basically that we are knowing that the natural fiber means whatever the fibers we are getting from the nature directly or indirectly so the many more elements from the nature okay we can be able to produce such kind of that fibers so which is basically yes definitely we have to do some processing just to obtain it but the naturally those contains or we can be able to say the raw material is or ingredients are available in the nature very widely and the synthetic fibers basically that we are knowing that this particular fibers we are just we can be able to say these are the man made fibers so these are the examples of the natural fiber that is the silk that we are knowing it cotton most of the times we are using the cotton fibers for the wearing purpose because we are knowing this is the naturally available and uh, which will be gives a very good kind of that comfort when we are wearing it then the wools so again wool is naturally available then cashmere and mohair then the synthetic fibers so these fibers we are just manufactured in the textile mills so these are we cannot be able to say these are the uh, very natural fibers so this is basically comes under the man made fibers so rayon then nylon so those uh, nylon kind of that wires that might you have seen then the acetate then acrylic and polyester so that we are knowing that there some sort of that acrylic plates and all those things so basically these are the deals with the some sort of that synthetic fibers okay now in case of natural fibers how the natural fibers are classified that is again important to understand so the vegetables and cellulose so these are the natural fibers that we are knowing so we are getting the natural fibers from uh, vegetables or some sort of that cellulose or the, we are getting the natural fibers so from the animals or some sort of that proteins and the minerals so these are the main three elements from where we are getting the natural fibers and now what is the meaning of cellulose fibers so cellulose fibers that cotton uh, that is having we are getting that particular cotton from the some sort of that vegetable fibers so which is quite strong tough flexible and most of the time uh, this is having the very fantastic property that is it is deals with the moisture absorbent properties 
So this is the related to the cotton fiber. Then rayon, rayon is again uh, we are getting uh, or we, which will become under the cellulose fibers. So rayon is the chemical altered cellulose, which is very soft in nature and which is having the versatile properties. Then cellulose acetate, the, it is the chemically altered to create an entirely new compound not found in the nature. So basically it is not directly found in the nature. It is having some sort of that chemical uh, treatment on it just to produce it. Okay. Now synthetic fibers. So basically nylon that we are knowing the properties of the nylon. This is most durable uh, of in the man-made fibers. So whatever may be its uh, durability, it is quite high and it is extremely light in weight. So basically those nylons fibers, most of the times that swimmers costumes are manufactured with this particular nylon fiber. Then the polyester, basically again, we are using some sort of that cloth of the cloth polyester and which is again the widely used the man-made fibers. Then the acrylic that is the very much light in weight, soft, and resilient fiber. So uh, many more nowadays you can be able to see some sort of that uh, photo frames or some sort of that we can be able to say that particular name plates. Those, those who are manufactured with this acrylic and last is the spandex. Okay, so the spandex is having very high or great kind of that elastic properties. Now First of all, you should be able to understand what kind of that different materials uh, that we are using as an fibers. And uh, basically these uh, are the contents that we are going to see thoroughly in the further part. Okay, <clears throat> so the first of all is the glass fiber. This is most widely used filament that is the glass fiber. Many more mixtures that are many in the many more studies that you have seen that that glass fiber is widely used in the nature or many more times that whatever may be the composite structure that you have seen one of the element is the glass fiber. Then the second is the carbon fiber. Again, the carbon fiber is having very high elastic modulus. Then next is the boron fiber. Again, the boron fiber is also having very high elastic modulus property. Then in the polymers that we have seen about the Kevlar fibers. So basically <clears throat> the Kevlar fibers are quite tough in nature and uh, for the bulletproof uh, some sort of that shields or some sort of that bulletproof jackets, the Kevlar fiber nowadays are widely used. So you, you can be able to see some such kind of that application uh, for the Kevlar fibers. Then the ceramics, so SIC and Al2O3 aluminum oxide that is used as in a ceramics. And basically these all fibers we can be able to compare with the metals like a steel or aluminum. So aluminum which is having a light in weight and the steel that we are knowing the steel is having very high kind of that strengths. Now uh, in the classification we have seen about the continuous fibers and discontinuous fibers so through this you just try to understand what is the meaning of continuous fiber means and what is the meaning of discontinuous fiber means so the continuous fibers are very long in length and they offers a continuous path so the particular path of that particular fibers are not going to bend disturb somewhere so in this particular image that you can be able to see what is the meaning of continuous or aligned fiber. So all those fibers that black lines that what you can be able to see over here. So okay in between that strips of the white color. So here those fibers are quite continuous in nature and whatever may be its path that is also the continuous. So whatever may be the load that is going to be an applied. So that is on this particular fiber itself. Now what is the meaning of discontinuous? So these are the discontinuous but aligned fiber. Aligned in the sense the alignment is quite proper means in one direction itself. So the direction of that particular fiber will not vary but the fibers what fibers you are going to see in this particular image. So those fibers are not continuous in nature but it is aligned. Aligned in the sense, in the sense it is just 
mounted in one direction only okay so here you can be able to see if suppose if we we'll compare this is as an a <clears throat> y axis so here also the fibers are aligned here also the fibers are aligned so all fibers are wounded in one direction only but these are the continuous and these are the discontinuous means fibers are not having the continuous path in this now the third that is the discontinuous and randomly oriented so the fibers are discontinuous in nature but here we cannot be able to see any alignment so in whatever may be the direction is available okay so in any direction when we are wounding this fibers together this is called as a randomly oriented fibers so the actually the main types are the continuous and discontinuous but according to its alignment we can be able to say the fibers are aligned fibers and the fibers are randomly oriented fibers okay so i hope that this is very quite clear to you now discontinuous means which is having very short in length and basically its length to diameter ratio is generally 100 okay so you can be able to understand the diameter is quite less in this now basically the composite structures so uh, one more part that we have seen the laminated sandwich kind of that uh, particular the classification in the composite so the laminar composite structure here you can be able to see the laminar composite now what is the meaning of lamina you just try to understand first of all so here you can be able to see the different four layers okay 1 2 3 and 4 so the first layer this particular only single layer basically it is called as a lamina okay so lamina means it is nothing but a single layer of any fiber along with any matrix and when we are just aligning or we can be able to say we are when uh, in simple manner when we are assembling okay you can be able to say assembling this different kind of that laminas together it will be form the laminate okay so this is particularly the laminate which is having more than one layer of laminas okay so when two layers are there three layers are there four layers are there so basically when we are adding those laminas together so that will be form the laminate structure so in the laminate structure whatever may be the fiber angle it is there so that fiber angle may be gets varied here you can be able to see the fiber angles so that is not having in one direction only so to, we can be able to combine the different fiber angle or different angles of the laminas together to form the laminate now second here you can be able to say this is the sandwich structure so in between these two laminas we are just adding the foam material so when we are making such kind of that combination so this particular structure is looking like your sandwich okay so here is suppose a bread element is there and in between that bread element we are adding some sort of that cheese or some sort of that vegetables and that will be form some sort of like a sandwich so similarly here is also the sandwich kind of that structure that you can be able to see over here and then next is the honeycomb so here whatever may be the might you have seen the honeycomb kind of that structure so this particular structure is looking like that okay now in the last part of this particular lecture that first of all you should be able to understand what are the different advantages of the composite material and what are the different disadvantages also so basically the advantages so composite material are very strong and stiff in nature then the composite material which is quite light in weight so that's why this particular uh, advantage will gives a wide variety of use of this particular composite and many more applications where we are required very much uh, light in weight because the metal that we are knowing the metal different metals are having light in weight but when we are comparing this weight with this composite structure so even though the metal like aluminum so which is lighter in weight as far as that metals are concerned but the composite structure we can be able to manufacture such kind of that composite material which is very much light in weight in compared with the aluminum also aluminum also now next is the high weight to strength ratio even though the weight uh, when the when when we are just talking about the metals 
if the weight of the metal some in same, uh, same cases if the weight of the metal is less that might hamper the its strength okay but this is not the case of the composite even we are reducing the weight of the composite structure that will not be hamper its strength so by using some sort of that different element of the fibers matrix or some different kind of that combination of the fiber angles we can be able to maintain its very good strength then it is having very good fatigue properties which is sometimes better than that of metals then the composites are having the greater toughness and yes definitely the last property that is quite again the important that is it is having the no corrosion property means uh, basically the metals might have gets corroded so in the marine application that majority of the time nowadays the composite materials are preferred than that of metals because the composite material will not be gets corroded like a metals definitely there are some sort of the disadvantages so uh, recently but those disadvantages we can be able to overcome by uh, some sort of that research or by some sort of that doing some different kind of that uh, innovations or inventions in these areas so this area is quite again open for the research purpose also now what are the disadvantages that are the properties of this particular composite are sometimes depends on its direction of the fiber angle then some sort of, it is subjected to some sort of that uh, chemical attack or solvent attack means whatever may be the fibers are there which is we are using just to bound the fibers uh, together that matrix we are using and that sometimes those particular matrix may be gets attacked due to the chemicals or some sort of that solvents and then the fiber structure might be gets disturbed because of this chemical attack then basically now uh, still it is having quite expensive in the nature uh, but yes definitely once uh, its manufacturing process is uh, having some sort of that uh, wide variety of uh, ranges might be gets available then definitely its cost will be less in future then the manufacturing method it is quite slow and costlier so still whatever may be the manufacturing it is a the challenging part in the composite because the manufacturing with a great kind of that accuracy uh, nowadays whatever may be this methods are available it is quite costlier in nature and that's why the composite structure what we are manufacturing uh, which is having little bit of expensive one so all those uh, areas that we can be able to enhance in the future so definitely i hope this we give a, gives you the idea some some sort of that basic uh, introduction part related to the composite and definitely in the next lecture that we are going to cover the further part related to the introduction thank you thank you very much